if you've been turning a wrench for any length of time, odds are you've changed more than your fair share of engine related components, whether it be a water pump, oil pan, gasket, heck, even a cylinder head. But do you ever have a comeback caused by a leaking gasket after your repair? Well, stick around, I got some tips for you on avoiding those types of comebacks in today's The Trainer. Nearly every component on an engine relies on some form of gasket or seal to ensure against fluid or pressure leaks. In the old days, these gaskets were primarily made of cork or paper, and the sealant was often used to help hold these gaskets in place during reassembly. But beginning back in the mid-80s, manufacturers began using gaskets with a bit more technology incorporating synthetic rubbers and tempered steel, including the MLS or multi-layer steel head gaskets every professional technician is familiar with. Now, when a comeback caused by a leaking gasket occurs, it's easy to blame the gasket. And while in some cases it may be related to the quality of the gasket, in the majority of the cases, it's because of two other factors, either lack of proper surface preparation or the improper use of sealants. Let's take a look at these issues as they relate to different styles of gaskets. We'll start with synthetic rubber gaskets. First, not all rubber gaskets are the same. Synthetic rubbers have a number of different formulations. The most commonly used for gasket applications include silicone rubber, fluoroelastomers, and hydrogenated nitrile butadiene rubber, <laughs> or HNBR for short. In addition, there are two types of synthetic rubber gaskets, the carrier and the non-carrier. Carrier gaskets are a synthetic rubber that's bonded to a plastic or steel frame, the carrier. And the carrier is used to locate the gasket in place as the two parts it's intended to seal are reassembled. Non-carrier rubber gaskets are synthetic rubber gaskets that do not require a carrier to maintain alignment. Non-carrier gaskets are typically used when one of the two mating components already has a locating system or channel to keep the gasket in place. When replacing a synthetic rubber gasket, whether it be a carrier or non-carrier type, be sure that the mating surfaces or channels are free and clear of any residual oil or coolant using a cleaning agent like Brake Clean. Just be sure to allow the two components to dry thoroughly before installing the replacement gasket. And make note, never use any kind of sealant or silicone unless specifically directed to do so by the OEM procedure. This style gasket relies on compression to create the seal. If an additive is used, it could allow the rubber to roll rather than compress. And that can even weaken or even break that seal and a leak will surely follow. Now let's talk about head gaskets. Replacing head gaskets, whether they're composite designs or MLS, it's a little more involved because of the tremendous pressure these gaskets must contain. In addition, there are coolant and oil passages that must be kept separate from each other and from the combustion chamber. Surface preparation is absolutely critical to a successful head gasket seal. And of course, the first step is to remove all the old gasket material from both mating surfaces. And with so many cylinder heads today made of aluminum, you need to stay away from any type of tool that could damage that surface. That means no metal scrapers, no razor blades. Instead, try a tool like the one offered by Mala. It's a combination scraper and cleaning tool that will help you get the job done without damaging that critical surface. 
and never use Rolock or grinding pads to clean the surfaces for three very good reasons. First, the debris and dust generated will ultimately get into the oil supply for the engine no matter how careful you may be. These particles are too small for the oil filter to remove, but not too small to attack the main and rod bearings or other low clearance components in the engine. Second, these options can very quickly eat away at the surface of the head, creating valleys that will encourage leaks to develop. And third, they can impact the roughness average, or RA, of the surfaces, and that can impact the ability of the gasket to seal to that surface. An additional step you must take when replacing a cylinder head gasket is to check both the engine block and the cylinder head surfaces for warpage using a mechanic straight edge and feeler gauges. Using the OEM specifications, you'll need to check the head in several places center, both outer edges, and diagonally in both directions. Once you've determined that the mating surfaces are serviceable, clean them thoroughly and allow them to dry before reassembly. Now during your reassembly, don't use any kind of sealant or adhesive unless the OEM service procedure specifically tells you to do so. A lot of these materials can interact with the coating on the MLS gasket and that could lead to a premature failure. Now if you choose the Mala brand, any sealants that you may require will be included with the gasket along with instructions of how and where to apply it. And now that you've invested the time to make sure that the surfaces are properly prepared, it's time for the next critical step in your reassembly. That's putting everything back together again. Make sure that you use new cylinder head bolts if specified by the manufacturer and follow the factory tightening process step by step to include whether or not the fastener's thread should be lubricated, what the torque application steps are, and what the fastener tightening sequence should be. Now I mentioned at the very beginning that the majority of gasket failures are not the cause of the gasket. Notice I said majority because all gaskets are not created equal. Here's a few additional tips to help you judge the quality of that MLS head gasket you just got. The first step is the thumbnail test. Drag your thumbnail across the surface and try to remove the coating used on the steel base. The cylinder head and block undergo hundreds of thermal cycles, heating up and cooling down, but typically expand and contract at different rates. That results in a scrubbing action on the surface of the gasket. Now if you can remove the surface coating with your thumbnail, what do you think will happen in the real world? Now in addition to the hundreds of thermal cycles that this cylinder head gasket has to contend with, it also has to deal with cylinder head lift. And that occurs every time a combustion event occurs. The engine literally tries to blow the head right off the block. If you notice on the MLS gasket, there's a raised steel bead. That's what provides the contact between the block and the head. And it has to maintain its shape and seal during both the loading and unloading of those cylinder head lift cycles. If the tempered steel used in the gasket is inferior, it won't be long before the pressure it's supposed to keep inside finds its way outside. You can compare a gasket's ability to do this using the snap test. While holding the gasket flat, raise one corner to roughly a 90 degree angle and release. Does the gasket bend or keep its shape? If the steel doesn't have enough spring action to withstand this simple test, how well do you think it will live up to the stresses placed on it in actual use? Now when choosing a gasket set, ask yourself a few questions. Does the gasket supplier have experience in making the gaskets that the OEM uses on its assembly line? Do all the gaskets needed for the repair come in the kit? And finally, are the gaskets the same form, fit, and function you'd expect from the OEM Direct gasket? Hey, nobody wants a comeback. So the next time you're looking at some type of job requiring gasket replacement, 
whether it's a thermostat or a major engine rebuild. Follow the simple steps that I've shown you today and choose a supplier you can trust. Like the products made by our sponsor, Mala. Thanks for watching.